Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from uh, goldenblack.com here at home. Uh, hours and hours and hours after Purdue's uh, 70 to 65 win over Rutgers at the Big Ten tournament. I know this is very late, uh, but I wanted to see the Michigan State Ohio State game before I open my mouth. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different rap video, given that I did not see the game. Uh, I saw a little bit of it. I followed it online, but I did not see the entire game uh, because I had therapy appointments this afternoon during which I did uh, follow the live stats at least. So I can at least, uh, I know enough, I know at least enough to be dangerous. Uh, so this is your rap video following Purdue's 70-65 win over Rutgers at the Big Ten Tournament. It's brought to you by our friends at the Purdue New Club Hotel. Thank you to them for their support as always. Uh, we appreciate it very much. So to start off, I think this was a good win big picture wise. I think it was, uh, I don't want to say symbolic, but I think Rutgers was a little bit of a hump. Purdue had to show it to get over. I think their style of play obviously is something that um, is a real problem for Purdue at times, especially it's two young guards. Uh, especially for Zach Eady, uh, you know, facing one of these super old, super physical, super energetic teams that like value every time, um, I think was something Purdue has had problems with the last couple of years. And that's why Rutgers has had so much success against Purdue. I think facing a team like this right before the NCAA tournament, I think is a positive showing uh, yourself that you can overcome a team like that. Whereas, you know, you've really struggled with that sort of thing before. Um, I think is a big deal. Um, and I think it's just, you know, you, you never know who you're going to run into in the NCAA tournament. You never know how the fouls are going to go in the NCAA tournament. So grinding out a game like this against an opponent like this uh, is nothing but positive for Purdue, obviously. I think when you play Rutgers, I think, um, you know, one thing to point out here is a lot of college basketball teams are playing with men right now. And, um, Purdue is one of the few teams in the Big Ten that are still playing kids, largely. Now, obviously, Zach Eady is not a kid. Um, a lot of Purdue's players are older, they're experienced, they're big and strong. But Purdue relies on kids more than anybody else because of those two freshman guards. And I think that, um, you know, when you play a team of, gr of grown-ass men like Rutgers, I think it's important for your grown ass men to really, uh, you know, step up. And when you look at at what Purdue did today, and scoring is only part of it. Obviously, um, it's more about responding to the physical uh, nature of the game. But when you look at Mason Gillis, Zach Eady, and David Jenkins, your three grown men uh, above all others, I think that's huge for Purdue. That those guys all played really well in this game because. It's really hard to beat Rutgers with kids, and um, I've always said Mason Gillis is the perfect player for Rutgers games because his mentality is such that he is built for these games, um, and he sure delivered today with his uh, 20 points, 9 rebounds, and uh, so on. I, I just think the physical nature of these games requires your your, your Mason Gillises and your David Jenkins and your... Zach Edes to really bring it. And I think all three of those guys, based on what I've seen, based on what the box score here is telling me, those three guys did bring it. Um, and obviously there's only so much Zach Eady can do in a game like this because they're going to swarm him like crazy. But obviously kudos to Mason Gillis and David Jenkins Jr., your, your, two, most, your two oldest and most physically mature guys, um, guys who don't back down from anybody in those regards. And that's what you have to play with when you're playing against Rutgers. Um, so Purdue gets Ohio State now. Um, you know, you're kind of past the point where, uh, you know, Purdue has very little. Obviously, you want to win. Uh, obviously, you want to maintain your momentum. Anytime you have to win, a, you have a chance to win a championship, go win a championship. But now that you've won this first game, uh, you know, you, it, it – it's time to win the thing uh, in, in terms of mentality. And I'm not saying Purdue necessarily didn't come into the Big Ten tournament uh, that way, but, you know, there's the other way to look at it where, you know, Purdue's got itself a pretty good uh, situation going to the NCAA tournament. Um, 
this might have been your classic case of, you know, Purdue just has stuff to lose, not to win. But now that you've won that first game uh, and, uh, you know, a opportunity to play for a championship is two is one win away. Uh, you know, Purdue's it would be huge for Purdue to win this thing, um, even if it means playing three games in three days right before the NCAA tournament. Um, it's going to be Ohio State, uh, who suddenly has figured itself out. Um, they'll be playing their, what, their fourth game and I don't know. Um, but you know, Ohio State's the hottest team in the Big Ten right now. And, uh, that's the danger of the Big Ten tournament is somebody rides a heater at the right time, knocks a bunch of people out of the NCAA tournament, wins the thing. Uh, it, it doesn't happen very often, but it's, it's, uh, um, it's always possible. And Ohio State right now playing without Bryce since, since about today. Uh, they're on a tear, and uh, they just just waxed another uh, very mediocre Michigan State team. Uh, that's a bunch in a row now uh, for Michigan State. Um, and are they in the NCAA tournament? And if so, why? Uh, they're 19 and 12. Uh, I just, you know, I, I think there's some resumes in the Big Ten where if you really put them under the microscope, you could ask yourself, you know, I think Michigan State beat Gonzaga in non-conference. They've got some good wins and all that, but um, it used to be 20 wins was the bar. And, uh, you know, obviously the bar is changing. This isn't a video about Michigan State's qualifications for the NCAA tournament. It's just a video about Purdue, and Purdue gets Ohio State instead of Michigan State. It is hard. Conventional wisdom says to beat a team three times in a season. I'll remind you that in Columbus, a long, long time ago, Purdue needed to uh, make a – late shot to to beat an Ohio State team that season then immediately fell apart. Ohio State's hot as hell right now. They are their only chance to go to the NCAA tournament is to win this thing. Um so Purdue's gonna have tans full tomorrow. Um but they have beaten Ohio State twice. They know they can succeed against these guys. Ohio State's legs might be getting a little bit weary, but um I think Purdue looked the part today of a pretty tough team. Uh, a pretty determined team, what have you. And I think their freshman guards will be much better tomorrow uh, than they were today. And uh, that bodes well for Purdue's chances to advance to the final of the Big Ten tournament, but take nothing for granted. Um, that buzzsaw element is very much alive with this Ohio State team right now, the way they're playing. Um, so uh, we'll see if uh, Purdue can make some shots tomorrow. I think that when you look at the difference between the first half and the second half, I thought it was really significant for Purdue to have the lead at halftime today after not shooting well in the first half. We've seen what has happened to them at times this season when they have not shot well, when they have missed free throws, when they have turned the ball over, all of which Purdue did in the first half um, against Rutgers. Uh, they were 5 of 10 from 3 in the second half. They cleaned some other things up. Look what happened. Uh, I think if Purdue can build on that stuff, just take care of the basketball tomorrow, make threes, um, all the obvious stuff. I think they'll be in pretty good, they'll be in pretty good shape. So that's kind of what I got here from uh following Purdue's 70 to 65 win on my phone, watching some highlights afterwards, and uh I hope this was worth your time. So sorry I didn't have a video after the uh Illinois game. Uh there was an incident. I was unavoidably detained. Um, but I'm okay now. So uh I will probably talk to you guys again uh, tomorrow after the Ohio State game, provided there are no incidents once again. So thank you, everybody, um, and thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel for your support. We appreciate it very much. I believe Mike and Alan were out there the other day talking about Purdue on Facebook or something. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And uh We'll talk to you all again very soon. Thanks, everybody.